Seven projects are only accessible to me and my collaborators, my team, and the public ones are available to the community at large, meaning that virtually anybody can work on them. Now, what we're going to do here is uh, take a little bit of a deep dive into one of these projects, like this top one. This is a project that, uh, that Maggie, one of our bioengineers, has been working on over the past couple of months. And uh, the first thing you notice is that this is sorted, or what's really creating it, is a bunch of these entries. Now, entries can be virtually anything. It can be things ranging from protocols and procedures, all the way to tables, data, images, and of course, your prints. So what we see here, the first thing that we see is the title of our project, project and her goal. What she's trying to do is really develop a new bio that uh, has great printability and can be used with cells. And as we scroll through Maggie's entries, we get to see the whole story of how it is that she planned out her study, uh, the experiments that she planned out, the criteria that she used to define what was success and what was failure. And um, as we scroll down, we get to see that she started to narrow down to her material, to a material that had uh, two components. One was a gelatin, the other was herbinogen. And she was crosslinking this with a mixture of thrombin, transglutaminase, and calcium chloride. What we see is that she was actually able to use this to fabricate fairly large structures that were five millimeters tall. And for those of you who have done a lot of bioprinting, you know that this is not a trivial task. But even more excitingly, we found that she was able to keep the, the, resolu the resolution of this material down to below 300 microns. So basically, she could build these large structures at a very, very fine resolution. Extremely exciting. And um, perhaps the most exciting part is that we observed great cell viability. We we're actually able to grow cells inside of this material for more than seven days to show that the happy cells differentiating and growing into, into native tissue. So I mean, this image brings us to something pretty interesting here that we've done. Um, a lot of our customers, a lot of people that we work with, asked us over and over again for tools to be able to analyze these simple images, do basic things like count the number of live and dead cells, begin to quantify two aspects of biology. And uh, tonight, I mean, our team definitely took that challenge on, and we've developed a whole suite of different image processing algorithms that you can use not only to quantify your different images, quantify the number of cells, but even more than that, really begin to profile for more specific cell types. So for example, if you've got an image with a bunch of neurons in it, you can begin to calculate the average number of neurons inside of those neurons, or even the longest length of the axons. Now you can see these cell profiling features can be extended. Now look, tonight we're only launching with a few of these, you can expect that list to grow, and grow into more and more features for different cell types, more and more cell profiling features. So as you can see, Maggie's developed, Maggie's developed a really pretty exciting biomaterial, and uh, we thought there were a few ways that we could bring that to you. And instead of choosing the easy way, packing it into a bio and a powder, we chose to do something that was a little bit more difficult. Packaged it up into a brand new kit that you could use right out of the box. So that's what we have here. This is actually this gel new gelatin material that Maggie developed. This is the core backbone of our new soft tissue kit. And this, tissue, this soft tissue kit can be used right out of the box to print with cells and start developing the soft tissues, regardless of your experience level or of your expertise. So now we have a soft tissue kit. So what's the next thing that's missing? Hard. That's right, a hard tissue kit. Um, luckily, Maggie's been working on that as well, and uh, tonight we're happy to show you um, our hard tissue kit. Now, this is a PCL-based kit. Again, it comes with everything you need to print right out of the box. You can use it to mix up new composites, new formulations, and develop new combinations of materials for pretty much all of your starter hard tissue engineering needs. Now, I'm going to talk about one more material today. Um, this is something that, that Gabe, another one of our bioengineers, is here tonight has been working on, and uh, we've been working in close collaboration with some of the people in this room for it. Uh, specifically, we worked with, um, goes, worked with uh, Advanced Biomatrix to, to develop a brand new material that is collagen-based. It's basically a high concentration collagen that can support great cell growth, and which can be printed at very high resolutions using our FreshKit. Now, our FreshKit is a product that we developed in close collaboration with Adam Feinberg's lab at CMU. They're some of the greatest minds in the world, and we're really, really excited to be working with them. We couldn't have done any of this without them. So thank you guys. So now that you see we've got these three new kits form the basis 
along, along with our starter kit, they really form the basis to start off any biobranding project, regardless of what type of tissue it is that you're working on, regardless of what device you have. This really opens up the doors so that regardless of your experience level, you can get your hands dirty and start learning how to use these tools and start developing really nice and useful new products. <coughs> so we switch back to Maggie's project, and as we can see, we know, we know that being a scientist is really all about building off of each other's work. So if we wanted to keep adding to Maggie's project, all we have to do is clone or duplicate that project, and we can dive right in and start to edit it. Now as, we, as we're scrolling through that, you can see that Maggie actually tried a lot of different materials. She didn't, just, she didn't just try one thing. As she was running through her studies, she was telling us the same things that you were telling us. Basically that she wanted more. She wanted more materials, she wanted to have more, be able to print more and more materials. And not just that, she also wanted to have more control over what she was printing. Now this is not a trivial task. I mean, as we saw, we had the Biobot 1 that had two extruders. And um, we thought that would be enough, but you're never satisfied. Uh, so tonight, we're really excited to show you one of the things that our team has been working on for the past year and a half. And I think you guys are really going to love it. We call it the Biobot 2. And <laughs> and the first thing you notice is it's beautiful. Um, it's actually, we, we increased the footprint a little bit from the Biobot 1, and that was to, to make it easier to access and easier to work with. However, we kept it small enough to fit inside of your hood, that way you can continue to work with these tools and their sterile conditions. Now I want to highlight a few features here, so, so bear with me. The first one is the three-axis system on this device. Now, what we did was we took the, the three-axis system on the Biobot 1, which uh, for those of you who have it, you know it's actually one of the best out there. And uh, we made it even better. So how did we do that? Well, we did two really exciting things. The first is that we added extra motors to have more precise control for what was going on. And also, we made each and every single one of these motors intelligent. They each have their own chips, their own processors, that guarantee precision and that the motors won't skip. And beyond that, they actually help track the position. So you know precisely where the extruder is at any given time, guaranteeing extremely high precision. We're actually seeing under one micron precision on this device, under experimental conditions, which is well beyond anything that we've ever seen before. The most prominent feature, without a doubt, is this beautiful cylindrical extruder.